Okay, let me start today's session. So yesterday we had discussed about the course contents and uh, we started talking about the cloud application. What is cloud and what is the fusion applications and how the fusion architectures do look like. And we also started talking about uh, uh, different deployment options Oracle Cloud is offering to us and what is SaaS software as a service, what is platform as a service, what is infrastructure as a service, we have seen all those stuff. Okay, so now let's go ahead and talk about HCM Cloud. Yesterday when you are talking about the cloud, I said Oracle offers a number of product families. Okay. So I'm muting everyone. If you have any question, you can unmute yourself and ask me. Okay, so we, yesterday I was, when I was talking about the Oracle Cloud, I said about the Oracle front-end user interface consists of a number of product families. Out of various product families, human capital management is one of the product family. Okay, and now we'll be talking about the human capital management product family. What are the various modules available in the human capital management product family? And we talk about each and every module in an overview. And then we will go into the core HR implementation part. Okay, so let's begin with. So Oracle HCM Cloud Service, basically. So Oracle HCM Cloud Service has various number of modules like global human resources, talent management, workforce rewards, workforce management, work-life solutions. These are all various modules being used for HR operations to perform day-to-day -day HR operations. It is also being used by the employees to maintain their HR information, maybe to, to maintain their personal information, to view their salary slips, to view their compensation statements or to do their do their appraisals or do their learning management or do their uh, uh, profile management. Various reasons employees will be using all these models together. Even executives within the company also use these modules to derive, to derive how the company or how the employee performance is or how, how much we are paying to the employees or how many employees are 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 doing under are underperforming or how many employees are are uh, are into their proper career planning there are many various various derivations can be derived by the executive using any of these all of these hr modules and also for hr information technology where we have a uh, 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 we have various technologies can be applied on top of these modules to derive many more business functionalities basically. So all, these are all the modules being offered out of the Oracle. And all these modules have a support of globalization and saturated localizations. What does it mean? What does it mean is whatever the models being used, some of the functionalities of HR functionalities will be varied by country by country. In country, there are some certain legislations or some certain legal rules has to be followed. So whatever application, whatever HR applications we are using, those applications should abide to that specific legislation rules. Example, in the uh, United States, name can be taken as a first name, middle name, last name, and initial like that. If you go to the Mexico, in that case, any employee name has to be captured as paternal name, maternal name, first name and last name. Maybe it's different in different country. So if you go to any HR application, based on that specific localization, the specific country, the we have to follow the specific legal rules to capture the information or to enter the information. Okay, so those globalization and saturated localizations are being supported by the Oracle as well in all these modules. And another beauty of that is all these modules can be integrated with a social network. Social network, in sense, within the company, employees can talk together using the social networks. 
if we enable it and also all the applications can be accessed through mobile we have the provision and all the human capital management applications information can be used on the analytics and dashboards and also can be combined with the big data to derive the necessary information to take the business decisions and also whatever the hr modules are there they can be integrated to your custom applications or on premise applications or other saas applications other saas application in sense any other software as service applications example salesforce concur workday any other saas application we can do the integrations even those integrations are can be is possible after the human capital management application and along with these modules if you wanted to achieve any additional functionality as i said oracle has given a lot of product families and hcm is one of the product family it means oracle has given certain business processes out of the box if you want to have your own business processes then typically you have to extend the application if you want to extend the application like creating your own page or creating your own business process you should go with the platform as a service or infrastructure as a service to enhance the solution what is being offered out of the box right it is a complete hcm cloud service suit okay let us see why we have all these modules let us talk about typical hcm life cycle any hr life cycle how does it look like okay let's say take that okay so if you see any hr application the life cycle will be the primary the first stage to big, begins with attracting the talent because we should attract the talent to get hired within the company the first thing is we have to make sure be enough people are applying for the jobs so we have to attract the talent that attracting the talent is again one application where we have to do the social short thing or we should have our career portals maybe like uh, deloitte.jobs.com or microsoftjobs.com whatever basically similar our company jobs.com basically basically people should go to come to our company and apply for the job so we have to attract the talent attracting talent and recruiting the talent that is one kind of application once we get that typically what we do we do them we hire the employees into the applic into our systems and once we hire them we onboard them onboard them in sense basically we the uh, one once the employee get hired typically what is the beginning steps to be done by the employee maybe they have to uh, 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 they should set the goals basically they have to set the goals of what needs to be done in the next 6 months or 1 year whatever and after 6 months or 1 year their performance will be evaluated how their performance is and based on the performance or based on the that year performance they will they get compensated they will get compensation amounts basically the salaries or merit increases or bonuses or stocks whatever and and based on their based on that they have to develop or grow the talent they have to identify what has to be developed by themselves they have to plan their career progression they have to they have to evaluate their succession planning basically what needs to be done to get succeeded within the job right and that has to be reviewed by their managers basically they have to compare with other people how they are getting done their manager has to help the help the uh, employee to make sure they are into the right succession planning or they are make sure they are into the right career progression by comparing other people or based on what job you are doing based on what kind of grade you are in there are various things comes into that the review the talent right and also along with that there is also time and up time and leave basically people will always fill the time sheets to to tell the management that will the manager or to inform the payroll that they have worked for so and so number of hours per week or they have to apply that they have to maintain absence basically when they take leave what kind of leave they have taken does they take a paid time off leave or a sick leave or any other entitlement leave they have to maintain the time and leave application based on the time sheet what they have filled based on the number of the hours they worked we do the pay we do the salaries for them and also the benefits benefits can be like if the employee if a company is offering the insurance benefits in united united states it is mandatory that every employee should offer the insurance benefits 
to the employees. Basically, we have to maintain those benefit applications and we have to pay accordingly. And in the pay, in the while doing the salary slip, basically we have to deduct the benefits, whatever being offered out of the company, right? And along with that, we have to manage the organization, a HR team or any dedicated team to should maintain the organization. And we have to make sure, do the health check and make sure that uh, uh, everything is happening on, on time or everything happening properly. If necessary, HR people should come and do the necessary promotions, transfers, whatever global transfers, whatever they have to do to optimize the workforce. So if you see, this is the typical life cycle of any HR application. If you take a, if you take a full blown suit of HCM cloud, basically, if we have a global human resources, workforce rewards, workforce management, talent management, work lab solutions, basically it is a complete, complete life cycle. Beginning, beginning from attracting talent to optimizing the workforce basically, right? So for this, if you use all these modules, all this cycle can be achieved, right? But some of the companies, most of the companies may not go with all the modules because every module needs licensing. Okay, what are the components available in the global human resources? I'm going to start from the third slide onwards, basically. So every module needs a licensing, basically. So maybe some people say that, hey, I don't want to maintain time and labor into the fusion application. I want to maintain on my own. Or some people say that, hey, I don't want to review review talent, grow talent. I want, don't want to maintain in my HCM cloud. I want to maintain separately. Then they no need to purchase the licensing for this. Okay, if they purchase total licensing, basically all these things will be interconnected. HCM cloud will provide that flexibility to make sure all these things are interconnected. But it is always possibility is that companies might choose for a different application or company might choose their own custom application for certain modules. Maybe they don't want to pay license for that or they don't want to spend money on those things. That's pretty possible. In the, some cases, what they will do, they might buy on, they might buy only for the talent management. Talent management in sense like, uh, let us take this. Talent management in sense like basically only to maintain the talent. Right? So uh, they don't want to uh, or they don't want to spend money. They would, if you see this, if you see this life cycle, talent management instance, sourcing the candidates, recruiting the candidates, onboarding the candidates, maintain the talent profile means the resumes, their experience, their, their certifications, all those things and setting the goals and evaluating the performance. And based on that, compensating the employee, continuous learning, developing the careers, review the talent and plan sessions. So it is only talking about maintaining the talent. In that case is basically, they don't need to buy the full complete suit of HCM cloud. They can buy only the talent management solution. In the talent management solution, we these are the number of modules being involved basically. Okay, basically it is nothing but talent management module. If you buy only talent management module, you can achieve this kind of stuff, but benefits is not there. Optimizing workforce is not there. Time and labor and absence management is not there. Most of them are missing, but still remaining items were there in talent management basically. So it is just like the overview how, how we can shuffle the applications together and on what basis, what kind of applications we have to buy from the fusion licensing. Okay, now let's talk about each and every module. What is global human resources? What components are there in the global human resources? What is workforce rewards? What components are then workforce rewards? And what are the key business decisions for us to choose the module? One to choose this module, one to choose this module, when to choose this module, and what are the things there in each and every module, okay? Let's start with the global human resources and identify what are the key business needs to buy the global human resources basically. So global human resources contains these sub modules, the core HR, workforce directory, workforce predictions, workforce model, HR help desk and health and safety. These are the six modules available in the global human resources. Okay. Again, in the HCM cloud suit, 
we have all these one, two, three, four, five modules. And in the global human resources, we have these six modules, basically. Sub modules, you can say. Means if you buy global human resources licensing, you will be having these six modules coming along with it. Okay. So basically, what is the use of the code headshot? What is the use of code headshot? Basically, what Oracle offers is Oracle offers capability to handle 200 countries jurisdiction out of the box. It means 200 countries legal jurisdictions can be handled in the core HR means core HR is typically used to hire an employee to maintain the employee information to maintain the basic information of employee to maintain the basic salary of an employee to maintain the uh, a manager of an employee or subordinates of the employee or to uh, 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 to maintain the what job employee is in what grade employee is in what location employee is in what position employee belongs to what department employee is in so all the basic information will be provided in the global human resources along with it also provides the maintaining the personal information of an employee first name last name middle name date of birth blood type phone number email address uh, 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 date of birth or uh, legislative information legislative information like uh, uh, in that country we need to capture the marital status or uh, in that country we need we, in that country we may need to capture gender what gender the person is all the personal information employee information basic salary information will be available in the core HR that is the reason if you want to implement any module in the human capital management Whatever sub models we are talking about at the beginning, global HR, workforce management, uh, talent management, whatever. Every module, this core HR is must. In, without the core HR, you cannot implement any module in the HCM. So core HR is very much important. And Oracle has, a, has given possibility of maintaining 200 countries out of the box, in the proper jurisdictions using one system, basically. It is very important. Okay. And, uh, 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 and also it is helpful to engage the workforce, like uh, providing employees and managers to simply access the HR information from any device, any place, anywhere, and we can maintain it. So let us see. So basically code HR, these are the list of things what you can do in the code HR. You can effectively hire, manage, and terminate the workers according to legislation, common practices effectively manage employment positions, jobs, including the global assignments and employee information provides employee with ability to manage their personal information, absences, benefits, enrollments to view pay slips and many more things. Basically they can do, they can, they can see their own personal information and they can maintain their personal information. Okay. And also HR people can also maintain their information with the proper legislations. Okay, so before going to this, let me do, let me go, let me start going into the application. Let me talk about the basic navigations into the application and I will show you what I'm showing in this slide. Okay, right. So what, so it is what, so what is going to happen for every one of you, Ravi is going to provide this link. This is a link he is going to offer you. Okay, so in this link, Basically, as we are into HCM courses, we have to use HCM cloud login. Okay, so we have different teams you can choose on whichever theme you wanted to see the application. If you want choose any theme, it will come up in the default theme. Basically, I will choose vision here and click on HCM cloud login. You are going to log into the application and every one of you will be given a username and password i will be giving the username and password and you will be entering that username and password to log into here okay so here i'm going to log in with one user robert jackman and i'm going to log in as him into the application so it is the fusion of home application basically okay so let's talk about the basic navigations into the applications first and then we'll come back to this concept and we will we'll walk through each and every module okay let me quickly go through the basic navigations so it is a home page this home page can be categorized into uh, four parts number one 
it is a global region whatever region we have here it is called a global region okay and whatever you are seeing it seeing it here this is called banner banner in sense where you will be having the your photo whoever employee logged in the employee photo and if the if, if a company has a social sharing enable social sharing enable in sense you can share information within the within the employees basically you can share something here you can maintain your status here and you can post information here a social site and if you have any followers for you it will be having 10 following and 8 followers and 29 conversations and also it will have something called employee news employee news is all the information here this information talks about what information you want to show to the employees if you click on employee news it will talk about hey some announcement is there that's the meaning of it so you can always configure whatever is there everything is be configured basically you can configure all these news items here so it is called a banner a photo social site and your employee news employee information and it is a home page in the home page basically you will be seeing the different icons what our icon is not having three dots it is means a page okay if there anything has a three dots it is called a group or a category we can call it as a category example me is a category it means it's a group of pages you click on it you'll be seeing multiple pages here okay if you click on any page you'll be going to the respective page if you click on personal information you'll be going to that personal information page that's the meaning of it and when you click on the page automatically whatever icons are there in that group or category will be coming up on the top automatically only the items available in that specific category or group under me okay and again you can go to the home page anytime and uh, 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 look at here it is a home page and there's another thing our home page or springboard it can be called anything springboard okay remember that and also there is one thing called a navigator here if you click on the navigator whatever you are seeing here everything will be in an expanded mode it is called navigator okay and there is one more thing called here personalizing the springboard whatever the information you have here if you think that i am having too much of icons i want to condense the icons then typically you can go to the springboard and you can uncheck something example i don't want to show work list here you can go here and check the work list automatically that work list will go away you can condense the list or expand the list you can personalize the springboard that's what it is okay and in this home page basically with the home icon and you can search for the people here and it is called notifications whenever something is waiting for your approval or someone whenever some 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 message comes to you just for notification all those things will come here basically basically someone has generated the automatically generated the password it is saying fyi hey someone generated a password automatically generated a password of you just on fyi information some things will be some there somewhere there is not fyi in some cases it will say that hey we need something for your approval basically i will talk about approvals and notifications typically approvals and notifications will be available in the bell icon and it is called favorites if you want if you open some page and if you want to make that page as favorite automatically go to that page click on this favorite icon that will be added into the respective folder of your own or you can keep it on the home folder and under your name there are some actions what you can do basically you can you can set the preferences set the preferences in sense what is your time zone or what is your favorite or is your preferable currency or what is their preferable date format or what is your preferable uh, 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 time zone what is your preferable language what language you wanted to see the data by what is the default session or what is the current session default means whenever you come into the application automatically that will come into this language current session means only for the current session you can see the data in that specific language display name is only the name will be shown in that specific language everything else will be shown in the whatever the current session is kept that's a language 
and we can also set regional regional instance where you can talk about what territory it is a default territory date format you can specify all these things basically so all these things is actually preferences only for this user preferences only for this robert jockman not for anyone else okay okay now if you are seeing that the screen has changed differently it was some it was different before now when i come back the same home page is coming up differently okay so it typically happens only in the demo instance because we have various teams enabled here and whatever team you are seeing here it is the default team for the latest version of the cloud application basically so when i talk about the extensions when i talk about the page uh, page customizations i will talk more about this page customization part but whatever screen you are seeing here it is actually the latest default latest versions default theme which version we are in is actually we are into the version 18b what is 18b a b c d i'll talk about that little while basically it's talk about it's actually uh, uh, quarterly patches being applied on any fusion application four times a year a for first quarter b for second quarter c for third quarter d for fourth quarter 18 means the current year 18a means patches applied in the first quarter 18b means second quarter c third d fourth if it is 2019 19a b c d okay i'll talk about that later how can i get back my previous theme what i have before so if you just close it choose the vision theme and you click on hsm cloud login automatically you'll be logging into the same theme what you had before okay so is it the theme okay we did the basic navigation i want to cover a little more but before that i am going back to where i am before so that we can cover what are the core hr functionalities and uh, uh, what is the workforce directory all those things okay so core hr Core HR typically, as I said, employee can example if employee logs in. If you have a core HR, employee can go to me and go to personal information and can maintain his or her own information. He can go to the personal details to see what is his or her personal details. And this uh, employee has a provision to update the personal details. And also, manager also can log into the can look at the employee information, update the details. So I, get, I can came here. And I can go ahead if I want to. If I, let us say I got married and I want to modify my last name, I will go here and I will modify my last name. And uh, I can have I can have a middle name. I can do whatever you want. Okay, let us see if I wanted to modify my demographic information. Let us say I got divorced. And typically, I can go here and update my marital status to divorced, whatever. And also, if you want to change my ethnicity. SSN number, this gender, these are all will be consistent. They won't change by time. That's why they cannot get modified. Remaining else can get modified anytime. Okay. So it's the personal information. Similarly, manager can also go and see the employee information. Example, if Robert Jockman is the manager, what Robert Jockman can do. Robert Jockman can go to my team. Under my team, he can click on my team. Under my team, he can see who are all the employees available under him. And he can see their information, not the personal information, only the necessary information, what can be seen by the manager, and they can see that. So all these functionalities will come by default to the core HR. Another important functionality what comes from the core HR is if you are a HR administrator, as a HR administrator, you can also view all the employees' information. How we can do that? This person is not a HR administrator. I will tell you how a person become a HR administrator. I will tell you how a person can become a manager. I will I talk about security. Okay, let me log in as some uh, uh, HR administrator who can typically see other employees' information. Basically, this screen will go on and off because I haven't gone from here, so don't worry about that. So, if HR administrator can go to the my client groups, in the my client groups they can go to person management. In the person management, they can go and search for any employee. Example, I can go here. I logged in as a HR administrator here. I can go and search for anyone with the name as a robot. And I can see their information and I can also see their personal information. I can modify their information. I can do many more stuff. So all this, all this maintaining 
hiring employee, managing employee, or employee seeing their information, see the uh, 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 country specific information will be available out of core HR. Okay, and also if any company has the union rules or labor rules or bargaining unit rules, all those rules can also be configured into the fusion applications in the core HR. Okay, next thing is workforce directory. What is workforce directory? Workforce directory is nothing but where we have ability to search for an employee. It is also a part of global human resources module. Okay, global human resources module has a code HR, workforce directory, workforce predictions, workforce modeling, work life solutions, health and safety. Okay, so workforce directory is where we can search for an employee in a public domain basically. So how many ways we can do that? Administrator can anywhere search for any, any employee. Let me again log in, log back with some employee, not with HR administrator, some basic employee, okay? So basically you will be given the username and password and uh, how we can differentiate employee, manager, administrator, we'll talk it later in the security, okay? So you can go to any page. So see here, here we have something called, if you go to the me, here we have something called uh, uh, where is the directory? Um, yeah, it is directory here. If you click on this directory, where you can search for your any any employee information here. Example, I can go, go here and search for John. There are many Johns coming here. So which John you want to look at? Basically, you can go and search for some John. Okay, and automatically it will show up that respect that person information here. This information is a public information only available in the workforce directory. That's what information you have basically. What is the contact info? There's no contact info. And uh, 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 about me, nothing is mentioned here. And basically what are the goals set by this person? And uh, uh, if some goals that person is kept, which can be shared in the public manner, then typically that we can able to see that here as we cannot see that. So all this public information is available from the workforce directory. Okay. So there's no review PD, there's no configuration is there. Basically all this public information can be searched from workforce directory. So any employee can search for any employee, any other employee. Okay. And a manager can also search for the employees under them. Robert Jockman is actually a manager. Robert Jockman can go to my team and click on my team and also search for the employee, search for the team members under him. Basically, there are the list of team members which are available under him. Example, Brian Joseph is reporting Robert Jockman and Brian Joseph is again having the 11 direct reports basically, right? So if you see, click on Brian Joseph, who is reporting to Robert Jockman, and Brian Joseph is again having 11 employees under him basically. See, manager is Robert Jockman, and it is the employment history of Brian Joseph, who had promoted, uh, uh, who hired in 2004, December 12, promoted in 2005, and has another promotion in 2009. So basically we are able to see this information because Robert Jockman is a manager of a Brian Joseph, that is why he has ability to see all this information here, okay? So this is what we are seeing here. What are the what are the skills and qualification of Brian Joseph as a manager, Robert Jockman, as a login as a Robert Jockman. Robert Jockman has ability to see the skills and qualification of M, uh, Brian Joseph here, provided any skills and qualifications are set up for Brian Joseph. You can see that basically, and also we can see their compensation. We can see their employment info. We can see their career development. We can see the section planning, all this information on existing absences, all this information I can see as a dog Jackman of Brian Joseph. This kind of searching ability comes out of a workforce directory. So you can, you can search in the public directory, you can search under your team, and, uh, and also one more feature, we're still opening up. Let me open up another page while we are here. Okay, see that it is skills and qualifications. We can see what are the competencies of Brian Joseph. 
so we has uh, 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 we have that uh, 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 organization awareness skill is three decision making skill is five it's very good problem skill problem solving is five adapting to change is four basically we have the zero to five rating scale here and we can see how the brian joseph competency is basically out of all these competency profiles we can see that so as a manager he can see that basically so this information this searching information comes under workforce directory okay and workforce predictions workforce prediction is another beautiful tool given out of the core hr what is workforce predictions basically it is predicting the performance and attrition of an individual it means how the person is being performed perform means how we know the performance performance comes with list of attributes how do you rate the performance in our company maybe i rate my company i rate my performance in my company by how how the how the appraisal happened or or uh, uh, what how, how how the what the salary increased in the past 6 months or one year or how many leaves the person has applied in the past one year every company has own number of attributes which will define how we can predict the performance of an employee basically it doesn't need any data science behind this all we need to identify what are the attributes to define the performance of any employee within the company that will say about the workforce prediction so how we can see that if you go to the home again let us say robert jockman robert jockman as a manager Robert Jockman as a manager can go to the my team and click on workforce predictions here he can we can see how the employees are being performed here so example high predicted to warrant termination someone can terminate high whoever is in a high zone it means there is pretty possible that this person is going to get retire voluntarily or or resign sooner maybe this person is not happy with how the how with his performance that person is not happy being staying within the company what could be the reason this uh, this guy matron predicted performance 85 percent predict to want termination 80 percent is the 80 percent chances of this person will go away from the company okay if you see the click on that person i click on view prediction details it will tell about why why that person is going away maybe the latest salary change is just only 0.99% it could be one reason or the grade is professional 0 to 2 which is less grade probably time in current grade he is the same grade for the 219 months for a long time he had no change in the grade maybe these are all the list of possible things which this person has high possibility of uh, resigning the company this is called workforce predictions and how these attributes being set we identify these attributes and we set the attributes and data science behind this prediction model will will look at the history of these attributes changed over the time what are the number of years we set and based on that identify that based on this prediction this person has a possibility of leaving the company by 80 percent so uh, it is a, this is a workforce prediction model is also given out of the box of co global human resources when you buy the licensing basically so Ramesh, it has a, sorry, this is Ramesh yep uh, the parameters behind this workforce predictions uh, these are all configurable or yes yeah, absolutely okay. have hundreds of attributes can be used to configure this yes everything is configurable okay. thank you okay. it's also part of the uh, global human resources basically right the next one is workforce modeling workforce modeling what is workforce modeling workforce modeling is actually modeling the business scenarios what does it mean what does it mean is example i have example let us say i'm a human resources company so i'm a hr administrator or a hr analyst then i want to predict if i acquire this company then how much i need to pay in total 
from my uh, uh, whatever I am responsible for. Example, I am responsible for United States employees. If you acquire this company and onboarded 350 employees on, along within the company in United States, what is the worker cost? So what is the headcount? That is one scenario. Or a manager, as a manager, can see if I move these many employees out of my team or if I bring these many employees into my team or in this 10 employees, if I give salary increases uh, with this percentage, what is my cost is going to increase or uh, uh, how it is, how it is going to uh, uh, affect my total performance of my team or how it is going to be affected my uh, 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 headcount all those things can be captured what if conditions can be done using the workforce modeling and and uh, uh, manager has the ability to do or hr manager has the ability to do to do the workforce modeling thing as well if you see go to the my team again and go to the workforce modeling here you can perform the if else can you can create your own model i think someone already created some models here if you see someone created this model what they have done they done that See, it is, they have done seven changes here. With these seven changes, what are the changes they proposed? They proposed transfer to this Elizabeth Mary. While doing the transfer, probably they are increasing the salary or they're doing some uh, changing the grades. They're actually changing the salary here. Basically, there are seven changes proposed. If they do these seven changes, basically, they are they're trying to open two new job postings under the manager. If they do all that stuff, then typically it is going to uh, it is going to it is going to in total it is going to increase the worker cost by 1.18 million. Maybe how this cost coming up again is configurable. Maybe you want to define the cost by pay period or per annual or for 10 years or for or for next 12 months or six months. Again, all this predicted effectiveness again it comes under multiple factors. The performances are or bonus payments, or, or the uh, sick leaves, or many other stuff comes into the picture. You can analyze what if conditions. And as and when, if you feel that, okay, this workforce model looks good for me, these changes looks good for me, then typically you can go ahead and you can able to apply these changes into the system, basically. It means whatever changes you have done, it will go into the system. As, an, as long as you won't apply it, these changes won't go into the system. It will actually give you what if conditions like what happens if you do this change? What happens if you do the promotion? All those things can be done by this workforce data model. It also comes as part of the core uh, um, chart. And another thing is help desk. Help desk is actually is additional licensing. Basically, it won't. Even though it comes with core HR, you cannot use it just like that. It needs additional licensing. Help desk is very very powerful tool basically. The fundamental behind that is actually an artificial intelligence. So what is HR help desk? HR help desk basically if someone wanted to contact HR for any information, typically they no need to contact HR. Basically they can create an incident in the HR request, HR self-service request. They can create an incident here and that incident will be assigned based on who is responsible for the respective employee. In the in the in the in the Oracle Fusion, we can set up something called area of responsibility or something uh, uh, like that, which will actually tells if the person is belongs to some example India Bangalore that India Bangalore HR is so and so person. So automatically, this incident will assign to that so and so person automatically. Not only that, it will give us the data privacy and also it will provide the case management to handle appropriately. And also it will reduce the cost and effort. And another beauty of it is we can create the incidents over the email. We can create the incidents or the chart window. We can create the incident or the phone or we can create the incidents or the application. And there's one more beauty of it is whenever incident is created, we'll be, we'll be creating a solution library. Solution library in sense we will have answers ready made for every question being entered by the employee not every question most of the questions because we cannot give answers for every question so most of the for example how to how to see my pay slip is a general question 
So for that question, we will ready-madely configure the answers. Well, then what happens when, when a person submits a question like how to view my pay slip based on that question, it will cross check with the library. It will cross check with the library of questions. That is actually an artificial intelligence. Basically, with this, this question, basically there is, a, there is a, a solution behind that which will take the question and at runtime, evaluate with the compare with the library and cross compare with the library, whatever is matching nearby, that specific library answer will come out of the library and send it back to the employee over the chart window or over the phone or over the web application at runtime. And based on the answer, basically I can immediately I can from my from my library, I could say that okay, if you want to go to if you want to see the pay slip, log into the application, go to about me. Click on the so-and-so screen, click on the so-and-so screen, there you can see that. So that flexibility is given HR help does. It's a very, very new uh, module, uh, uh, which is evaluating now. And it's also comes as part of global human resources, but licensing for that is additional. If you see here, here you can see the uh, uh, phone or chart window or, or from web application, you can create the incidents basically. You can do that. And the last thing is advanced HCM controls. Basically, as part of code chart, there is some advanced HCM controls given out of the box. So one of that is infolet. What is an infolet? So infolet is okay. So these are all the infolets. Infolets, nothing but we can create a report. We can create a report in a reporting tool. What are the reporting tools we have? We have several reporting tools called OTBI and BA Publisher. I'll talk about that later. When a report is built, that report can be displayed in the application itself. It is a report. It is called infolet. Why we are calling it infolet? Because this report, this is a, it looks like a tile, but it has information. It says that, hey, we have 63 new hires. Hey, we have six people retired voluntarily okay and we are quickly as a tires we are showing the information here basically we are we are increasing the application visibility here okay and another beauty of this tile is it can have multiple reports if you see the expanded view it will be giving a different different report here so if you minimize the view it will give a different report here so whatever kind of report you wanted to see, you can do that basically. One tile will can show up to four reports. Normal view, expanded view. And also if you see this tile, front view and back view. There's something called back view. So one tile is showing the four reports here. It means which is helping the business at runtime to take decisions basically. So it is providing along with the application, whereas we have application in the same place, we have a tiles here, which will talk about, which will talk about uh, uh, various reports. Whatever is necessary for our organization, we can get a visually analytical, rich reports where we can we can derive the data and show it at runtime, which will help for decision making basically. So these advanced controls, this is Infolet is one example. There's various examples given there basically, which will help you to. Uh, uh, have more information and also where you can provide auditing of data example HR administrator should know HR administrator should know who is modifying the data or how many has updated assistance in the yesterday or or how many has accessed the so-and-so screen if you want to create those kind of reports or if you want those kind of audit reports or if you want to build some kind of reports which help the executives and administrators or analysts to take the decision making all those things can be done using the reporting tools as well. And also Infolet is one advanced way where you can have four reports in one tile and make their business decisions much easier. This is one other way. Security can be set up for these Infolets? Yeah, um, absolutely. absolutely. To make sure who all should view these. Uh... Absolutely, absolutely. So we can absolutely secure, uh, set the who can see this report, who can who cannot see the report. Even the report is accessible. Who can who can see the data and who cannot see the data? We have the full full uh, luxury of keeping the security on top of the fusion applications. Okay, we, talk, we talk about it when I talk about security. Okay. 
And the last one in the last but one actually last but one in the global HR is workforce health and safety incidents. Basically, it's another functionality given out of the box. If anyone want to report the issues different from the dashboard or is this same thing? This you're talking about infolets? Yeah. It's not a dashboard actually, it's a, it's a standalone analysis. So is that a standard or it needs a special license? I mean, we can get it from dashboard too, but basically tiles mean the size of the tile should be very minimal. Basically, it's one by one or two by two sizes will be there. For that, dashboards won't really fit. And technically, we can embed dashboards too, but dashboards won't really fit. That's why most 99% people use a standalone OTBI analysis to embed in the infolet. But there's a possibility of uh, uh, accessing dashboard from this one too. We'll talk about it when I talk about uh, OTBI. So. Uh, sorry, uh, my question was like, is that a standalone uh, thing like, or like, uh, is it from this application? Like uh, as a normal feature? Yeah, yeah, this report is from Fission application only. It is from the uh, OTBI application, which is available in the same instance. Is that your question? Maybe I missed it. No, like what I was saying, like is this like a separate license thing or like? No, 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 no. Sorry, we don't need any separate license. It comes, it comes by default. Okay. It comes by default. Yeah. Infolet's not doesn't need any licensing. You can use it if you have any module. You can use Infolet's out of the box. Okay, so health and safety instance, nothing but if you want to report any incident, any injury, any vehicle incident, any unsafe condition, any property damage, any notice of violation, any harassment, all those things can be done using the workforce health and safety incident, which is self explanatory. You can see that basically, uh, it's also becomes under core HR and you can use it out of the box basically. And the last one is strategy workforce planning. It is actually, it's, it's, a, it's not something different. It's also part of the code HR. It's actually talking about the reporting, which is actually, we do reporting a lot in future, which is coming out of OTBI, Oracle Transaction Business Intelligence, which have, where we can create very visually rich analytical reports and dashboards, KPI reports, key performance indicator reports, scorecards, performance reports and many more things they helps us to do what if modeling and demand and supply planning and skill gap analysis we can also view some reports in the smart view sheet there are pretty more things we can do on the reporting base it also comes out of the box and we can use that so these are all comes under core hr components basically so global human resources components these are all the part of it and the next one is workforce rewards Okay, if you remember at the beginning, I was showing five models to you. One is global human global human resources, workforce rewards, workforce management, uh, uh, work life cycle. So we have discussed global human resources. Now it is a workforce rewards. Workforce rewards, nothing but to compensate fairly accurately and effectively to any employee. Basically, that's where we use the workforce rewards. And workforce rewards basically contains four components. One is global payroll, compensation, benefits, and payroll interface. Why I have given payroll two times here, payroll and payroll interface. Payroll basically, global payroll in sense, Oracle has given ability to process payroll for seven countries. For seven countries, basically Oracle has given out of the box functionality to process payrolls. Those seven countries are United States, Canada, China, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, United Emirates, Qatar, Mexico, and United Kingdom. For these seven countries, Oracle has given a solution to process the payroll. It is out of the box. You can implement payrolls right away out for these seven countries out of the box. For remaining countries, Oracle hasn't provided a solution for the payroll. So what they have to do, they have to rely on third party, example, ADP or any local payroll, payroll provider, they have to rely on it. To send data to them, 
Oracle has given a payroll interface, a file, an extract, actually extract nothing but a report we can say. Oracle has given out of the box report, out of the box payroll interface for those remaining countries, remaining any country basically, any other than the seven countries or the seven countries too, Oracle has given a payroll interface basically. That's why this payroll interface also comes along with the workforce reports. In reality, if we have the core HR licensing, you can implement payroll interface too. It's all, it's all part of core HR, but for understanding, I just kept it here. Okay. So, so if someone implements uh, HM Cloud in India, okay. they can't have their payroll in their system. Exactly. They cannot have payroll in Oracle. That's true. Oh. Because Oracle Cloud hasn't provided solution for that. Oh, okay. Okay. So you should rely on the vendor who is uh, maintaining your payroll basically. Okay. okay. So, yeah. Compensation. So let's start with the compensation. So compensation and benefits. What is compensation? Compensation comes along with basically uh, uh, there are four components within compensation. One is your base pay. Base pay in sense, what is your base salary? How your base salary is defined? Second thing is individual compensation. Individual compensation in sense, like awarding only to the respective person. Manager might think, say, I think I should uh, give some, give only the, give some spot award to that person. So individually compensate that person. So something like that. Star performer, individual compensation. Workforce compensation. Workforce compensation in sense every year merit increases will be there. Salary hikes that comes under workforce compensation. Or, uh, 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 or uh, every year bonus will be given to all the employees that comes under workforce compensation. Our employee company will provide stocks to every employee within the company. Maybe providing to the st providing stocks may fall with different criteria. This set of experience people will get these many stocks. This set of people get these many stocks. Or these many perform these high high performers will get these many stocks. A different performance evaluation will be there for the workforce compensation basically. Because this compensation basically it is to do end-to-end -end compensation management where they can uh, pay for performance and uh, uh, they can also do the uh, uh, let's say I can say I can written here base compensation basically where it talks about salary stuff. What are the salary components here? What are the salary differences between the last year and this year? An individual compensation, nothing but giving awards, or severance packages, part bonus like that. And co workforce compensation talks about giving the bonuses or giving the stocks or giving the uh, uh, additional stuff like that. So it's all comes under uh, uh, workforce compensation. So typically this manager can maintain it here. Example, as a Robert Jackman, what Robert Jackman can go, can go to my team, under my team, can go to any person, Simon Gilbert, and you can go here and go to the compensation. When go to the compensation here, we can see what is the salary of this Simon Gilbert. What is the base salary, and uh, 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 what grade he is in, and what salary base it is. So, what is the grade? The grade is sixteen thousand to twenty-five thousand. GBP can be given and this person has given 17,000 GBP basically. So we have this information. Similarly, uh, if, you, if you wanted to provide that is a bonus to the employee, typically in the same thing, it's a little slow. So I'm just telling the functionality, don't worry about how the configuration is. We have to still look at the configuration basically. So so if you see in the my team, basically if you go to workforce compensation, in the workforce compensation, I can go to, it is my annual compensation 2018 for 2018. I'm doing annual compensation here. I can reward here. In this reward, I can reward the all the employees here. Basically, I have all my employees here. I can say how much amount I can give to Gilbert Selman. Maybe I can give amount of 5,000. Okay, it will talk about uh, how much percentage it is. So if you say that, how much budget is allocated to you to give salary hikes, how much you have already used, and how much is remaining. 
So how many people you have already compensated? So all this analysis will be given here along with the way it is configured here. Basically, you can you can say how much uh, how much percentage we can give and how much budget is allocated to you to give. And also we have keep you can keep some alerts like how many people has bonus exceeded the recommended amount. All these alerts can be configured. And we can say how many are eligible employees are there, how many ineligible are there. All these things can be configured as part of workforce compensation basically. Okay, if you talk about individual person, it is called individual compensation and as well as base compensation. If you talk about complete workforce, it is called workforce compensation basically. That's what it is. And all this base compensation, individual compensation, workforce compensation comes can also be mentioned in one point of the place called total compensation. Total compensation is one place where you can see what are all the compensation given to you for that year. What are all the benefits given by the company in that year? That is called total comp statement. Any employee can go to their own personal information. Example, I can go to home again and I can go to my personal information. I can go to me is my personal information. Under me, I can click on my personal information and on the personal information, I can click on my compensation under compensation, I can click. It is my compensation over the time. In 2010, it is 1,000 shares, and uh, these are these are shares I have, and it is my current salary. And if you go to total compensation statement, here I could see my total compensation statement. What is the summary of my compensation statement? I have a cash comp cash compensation of uh, 118,000. I have benefits of 11,472 from my company. And I paid from my pocket of 7,799. So total this much I paid from my pocket and it is what company is given to me. And these many shares are given to me basically. So we, if you want to see the what is our cash compensation, you can go to cash compensation and you can see how much company has given to you. So this information is comes under quarter compensation statement. How many shares granted to you? Benefits. Benefits means insurance benefits. How much you paid? How much is your contribution? How much is your company contribution? So uh, Blue Mark is your company, your contribution for medical, you paid out to $4,200. For dental, you paid $588 in a year. It is your, your in a year. So basically, these are all comes under total comp statement, basically. This total comp statement also comes along with this workforce rewards compensation module. So when you say workforce rewards compensation module, Compensation model brings along base compensation, individual compensation, workforce compensation, total comp statement. It comes for basically. And again, in the in the workforce rewards module, everything is separate licensing. Payroll is separate licensing, compensation separate licensing, benefits is separate licensing. Everything is different. Okay. So it is very important module. And benefits. So what is benefits? Benefits nothing but where if you wanted to. Uh, 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 maintain the insurance benefit, global benefits, self-service benefits given to the employee. Mostly, as I said, in, in United States, it is mandatory that every company should give benefits to the employee. Every company, every employer, or every company in United States should pay insurance for the employee. That is why most of companies will maintain the benefits within their system. So benefits is one model which will handle that basically which will take care of the benefits. So if you want to enroll into the benefits, example, I am a, I'm, I am our job man. And if you want to enroll into the benefits, then typically what I should do, I have to go to me again, and we have something called benefits here, click on the benefits. And in the benefits, you can say that if you want to view the current and future benefits, or if you want to change your benefit election, maybe I want to change my medical insurance, or I want to change my, uh, increase my life insurance from hundred thousand dollars to two hundred thousand dollars. Okay, in that case, you can go here if you want to add your contact here. Currently, Robert Jackman has a spouse and pay two parents here. And if you want to create a new contact, you can do here. If you got a child, you can create a contact and add the child. Or if you want to continue with what you have here, then go ahead and you can start choosing the benefits here. What benefits you want to choose? You want to choose four hundred one k or four hundred one k catch up, or choose a program. I will choose a choice program and here I will say I am into medical HMO here and currently I am enrolled in medical insurance plan plus one option where I have to pay $358 or 
and complier will pay seven thirty two dollars. Annual amount I have to pay four thousand two ninety six dollars. So I can choose benefit benefits I wanted to enroll in. I can choose the benefit and I can choose my medical benefit here. I can go next and choose the dental benefit here. I can go next and choose the life and disability here and many other things I can go and choose here and I can confirm those are the benefits I will enrolled in. So to maintain that benefits is one module which is which is very big in one way but to look it is very simple. So these are all the things can be done in the benefits model basically. And the last one is payroll. As I said payroll only currently we have successfully we can process payroll only for Canada, China, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates. Well, let me one more thing. Are, are we covering like uh, open enrollment, how to set up all those things, yeah. all those parts? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there are too many things in one course. Yes, we are covering. So, so for all these seven countries, we can, we can, uh, Oracle has given out of the box solution to process the payroll basically. Okay, so for these common countries, we can do that. For other things, we can actually use the payroll integrations, payroll interface, which is a file actually, which can be provided to your payroll pro, pro, payroll vendor to process the payroll. Okay, so basically, if you have the payroll, basically, uh, uh, HR administrator can see uh, uh, the payroll activities, payroll flows, what what is the status of the payroll of that pay period and within the pay period, how many batches got processed and, uh, and as an employee, they can view the pay slip if the payroll is configured within the, within, within the uh, uh, Oracle itself and uh, uh, they can monitor the whole status. And also, as I said, if you don't have the payroll solution, uh, uh, Payroll solution given out of the Oracle. That's out of if it is not in any of the seven countries. Then typically from Oracle Fusion, you can send the data to the third-party payroll provider. These four extracts, Oracle has built these extracts already for you, and you can use it automatically out of the box. But we cannot directly use them out of the box. Basically, we have to modify it, or we have to add some other details or we have to remove some details, or we have to do some transformation on existing attributes. Something we have to do on top of it and generate the extracts and send to third party payroll providers and they can process the payroll for you. Once the, the payroll process the payroll, whatever the process data is there, like pay slips or any other information, that information we can import it back to the Oracle cloud. We can import it back to the Oracle cloud. We have a tool called HCM Data Loader, which can be used to import the data from optional system into the cloud application where we can store it for our reference basically. For example, India, as we don't have the Oracle payroll solution out of the box, some other third party will process your payroll. Basically, you will be providing all the necessary information like uh, salary information or sometimes you can also store the gross earnings elements basically. So you can send all those information to your third party provider. Maybe think of ADP India. Can provide to ADP India, ADP India process everything as per the tax regulations, it calculates all the taxes and generates the payslip. That payslip you can import into the cloud and you can store into the document of records. This is one functionality called document of records where you can store the documents into the fusion applications. And that payslips can be stored into the fusion application and you can see the payslip at any point of time. That is one thing you can do. So payroll benefits compensation comes under workforce rewards. The next thing is workforce management. So what is workforce management? Workforce management basically the key business needs for this workforce management first thing accurately capturing the time that is called time and labor. If you wanted to capture the time like when the you want if you want your, your basically your payroll might depends upon how many hours being filled in the time sheet or your payroll is depends upon when the person clocked in and clocked out, when the person took a meal and it to, uh, took the meal in or meal out, or there are various factors. If it depends upon the time of the employee, then we have to implement time and labor. So time and labor comes under workforce management. Similarly, absence management, like absence management, if a person wanted to take leave, take time off, 
uh, take uh, PTOs or take sick leaves or any other entitlements based on their accuracy, all those things come under absence management. So absence management, time and labor, along with project portfolio and expense management. What is project portfolio and expense management? Actually, these two comes under finance in other way, but they are tightly integrated with this time and labor modules basically. So if it is, if, if, if you choose, if you choose to be, it can be tightly integrated because projects, portfolio, nothing but allocating a project to an employee effectively are making sure that person works in that project for so and so pay period. So uh, when employee fill the timesheet, they will fill the timesheet for that specific project. That is where project portfolio and time and labor are tightly coupled together. And uh, uh, there are many companies which will, which will have a tight integration between the time and labor and project portfolio management applications too. And expense management, basically expenses where employees will, will uh, file their expenses. Example, if, if employee uh, 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 hired in the company, maybe employee will pay their pocket expenses to do the relocation. Then typically they have to submit the expense somewhere. They will go in expense management. Or your company has most of them are hourly employees which are traveling across. Maybe whenever they do the travel, they have to submit the expenses. For all the personal expenses, the business expenses, they need expense management too, which again tightly integrated with the human capital management applications because they start talking about employee information, who is the employee, who is the manager of the employee, which project employee belongs to, which department employee belongs to, and all that stuff again is tightly integrated with this uh, uh, HR application. That's where project portfolio management, expense management comes under workforce management module basically. So these are all different these are all modules, the time and labor where we have web clock, basically we can, uh, we can clock in and clock out. Example, let me log in as an employee who is a hourly employee. So if you go to me, then the web clock. In the web clock, basically I can comment, say that, hey, I logged in. I can comment clocking. Basically for today, there's someone clocked in and clocked out already. Basically every day we can go and clock in, meal out, meal in and clock out basically. So that time will be captured. Or you can go to the timesheet too. If you don't want to, I mean, some people will do the web clock and some people can go to the timesheet and they can fill the timesheet there basically. So we have the ability to fill the timesheet here. You can fill the time sheet here. Currently, your schedule is deferred from uh, night to 3 to 11 p.m. You are in night shift. It is scheduled or defined already. And based on the schedule, you have to work in and uh, 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 you have to uh, uh, enter your time sheet. Right. And if you have some absence schedule, it will be enabled here. That absence can be coming automatically into the time sheet. That is what integration between the absence and time sheet. Right. Example, in this week, if you take time off, that time off should come up automatically to your time and labor application. That's a proper integration, basically. So time and labor has the time collection, schedules and availability. You can also configure the rules. Example, let us say, if employee uh, 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 employee should not take meal for more than 30 minutes, or uh, if employee should not come late, more than five minutes. If employee is late for five minutes, then typically we can write a calculation rule to uh, 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 to reduce uh, to calculate the uh, payroll as per the need. Maybe basically we can we can cut down the off of the pay for that hour. Something like that. Those rules can be configured as well. So absence management, where you can create the absences and entitlements, and we can also have analytics where we can see the absence trends, how the employee was absent in the past six years or six months or one year like that basically. So these are all comes under workforce management, absence management, time and labor, project portfolio management and expenses comes under workforce management. And the next one is the workforce, sorry, what's talent management. So talent management has a lot many modules. I mean, lot many sub modules, but typically it's very easy to understand. The important things in that is profile management, career development, 
goal development, performance management, succession planning and talent review, learning and recruiting. Recruiting is not given here, but recruiting is recently added since uh, beginning of this year. Basically, these are all the list of modules comes under talent management. So what is the business need for that? To cultivate your talent, assess talent, increase brain strength, identify successes. If someone go, who can fill that position? Build talent pool and support the creation of high impact employee career development plans. If you need to do that, typically we have to maintain their profile management. We have to maintain their profile. What are their skills? What are the certifications? What are their drawbacks? How we can, uh, 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 we have to maintain their, maintain their profile here. And based on the profile, we have to define the career development where they are lagged in. Let's assess some, some, uh, 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 some, some career path for them. Based on the career path, assign the goals. Employee can set their own goals. A manager can assign the goals. And based on the goal, evaluate the performance, performance management. Do the appraisal based on their goals every year. If they, were, if they haven't met the goals, again, ensure that, do the section management, ensure the best talent is in line for future leadership of critical roles, basically. And based on that, review the talent. And basically, all these things are interlinked where you could able to uh, 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 leverage the cap potentiality in the employees and you can identify uh, who could be the best fill if the person goes away and or how you can foresee next six years how you can see the workforce uh, performance all those things can be done a combination of these talent management models basically so example the performance management we have a goal management and performance management where employee can set the goals and performance management i think but doing the appraisals and career and section planning it talks about your your Profile management, maintain your skills, gaps, other things, career development, talent review, and section management, basically. And based on that, we have also we have one more thing called learning management, where you could, have, could actually, uh, 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 learning management is another module, which is used to uh, provide the learning ability to for the employees. Some companies, it is mandatory for every employee should take some certain courses every year example security awareness course or uh, some companies necessary that based on the department or based on their uh, 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 demands they can go with uh, contextual learning or embedded training or targeted training means only for certain employees we can target the training embedded training means anyone can go and access the training from the application contextual learning means for us employees can access this training uk employees can access this training and collaborative and social learning means employees can connect together and combinedly get them enrolled into specific classes or they can share the knowledge between them. And also we have analytics where we can do the real-time progress and tracking basically. It enables managers and uh, learning and development experts to gain an insight on how the course completions are happening, how many people are doing it, all the stuff basically. Okay. So the team talent management basically where manager can see the team talent, they can always go to the team talent example uh, if the login is robert jackman i can go to my team and i can say uh, talent review and typically i can see oh i think it's not the one my team probably yeah team talent here the team talent i could see what is the talent of each team basically so performance meets expectations potential low risk of loss is high so i can see the team talent based on my uh, attributes being set and i can see my team talent a single view of goals performance talent metrics and section planning everything will be available at single shot basically and also last time we have seen the profile management how we can see their profile like where where in the radar this person is uh, in this specific competencies and also we can uh, 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 we can see the talent comparison between the different employees if we compare brian joseph to elizabeth mary what is the score what is the performance rating is it uh, uh, below expectations or above expectations this we can do the comparison too 
and also we can see the career development flow how we can define the career how many roles you have recommended or uh, what are the careers interest how how many are referred by the manager how many you set on your own so all those things comes under career development flow goal management setting the goals uh, every for appraisals basically and here evaluating the main uh, evaluating the employee like rating giving the rating to the employee okay this year you have performed well or this goal is performed well so all these things comes under uh, uh, as management basically okay so it's a talent review which we have seen already we can access uh, uh, where the person is compared to other people predictive analysis an example how the performance of that person compared to the prior meeting and current meeting all those things can be evaluated based on the talent review and uh, talent management module okay and learning management as i said contextual learning or embedded learning or, or uh, targeted learning, we can do that. And another important module in talent management is recruiting. So coming to the recruiting, there are two kinds of recruiting basically. So basically two kinds of modules for recruiting. One is Oracle Recruiting Cloud. And second one is Talio Recruiting and Onboarding or Talio Enterprise Edition. There are two more, two, two products actually. One is Oracle Recruiting Cloud and second one is Talio Enterprise Edition. Basically, both these two tools do the same thing. Both the two tools are used for the recruiting the employees and onboarding the employees. But Oracle Recruiting Cloud is very, very new, is very, very basic. Basically, most of the features were not yet available in the Oracle Recruiting Cloud and uh, uh, it is still evolving and basically as per oracle it will take another 18 to 24 months to completely evaluate so if anyone wanted to implement any recruiting and onboarding module they have to go with talio enterprise edition basically that's why i have categorized oracle recruiting and talio recruiting and onboarding both will be done for recruiting and onboarding basically but it is still oracle recruiting cloud is still evaluating and talio is completely evolved product and it's very much being used in most of the companies basically both are used to source the candidate their candidate can look for the jobs and apply for the jobs once they apply for the job recruiter will screen the person and get the interview done and create the offer letter send the offer letter trigger the onboarding process and get the employee get hired basically all the sourcing recruiting onboarding can be done by talio recruiting and oracle recruiting but oracle recruiting is very immature okay and the last one in our glow hcm cloud is the work for life solutions so talio licensing is that a separate part or yes is it, it is separate licensing so is, what is the case does this oracle hcm cloud uh, has that delivered integration mechanism yes. to tell you it is it is having right. delivered integration too Okay. Every integration has their own uh, limitations, right? So yes, but it has a delivered integration out of the box. Okay. So work life solution is very basic uh, uh, thing where we can uh, where we can uh, uh, previously if you my, my brand means reputation management like reputation management like measure employees influencing inside and outside organization how many how many courses you have done or how many activities you are volunteering and how many questions you have answered in the public or in the social network within the company it all talks about reputation management how are your mentorship and how many questions asked you and how many you have answered and how many questions did you ask all those things comes under my brand basically that comes under my work life solutions and my wellness it is wellness tracking basically it's all about your physical activity or your uh, uh, your wellness tracking your work life alignment and uh, 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 wearables basically some of some of the companies will provide the uh, fitbits where they can wear it and that fitbit will track your health check and that health check information can be stored in your personal profile and you can view the information in the application basically so that is my wellness and we have my volunteering if you have any volunteering activities you can uh, uh, you can uh, increase your brand and also increase your employer brand you can do the recommendations and your employee skills 
and my competition if you are into any any group competitions or company level competitions all those things will come into my competition so all are these are all the total modules being into the oracle hcm cloud now how do we access the information of all these things okay the various ways you can access the information of all these modules basically so number one Um, you can go to docs.oracle.com the docs.oracle.com there is a cloud click on the cloud and uh, oh sorry yeah cloud click on the cloud and click on the applications in the applications what is your application so we have all the customer experience enterprise performance management erp all that go to human capital management it is your equipment you go to global human resources in the global human resources the list of tasks how to use the global human resources how to implement how to administer all that or you can go to the books in the books you can actually go here and you can see how to administer workforce planning cloud how to use absence management you can have all this information here basically how to implement absence management how to implement benefits how to implement care development all this information you can access uh, 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 in these documents basically and there's one more thing um, Second, I will be uh, one more thing is basically, as I said, uh, Oracle upgrades our application every every quarter, basically, every quarter. Oracle comes up with the new features or fixes the existing functionalities. Things will get evaluated every year. Okay, so basically, uh, uh, every quarter, every four months, they're going to update the our instance. As I said, our instance is SaaS application. Basically, they will maintain they will maintain the uh, they will maintain application for us, right? So as they maintain it, they will be upgrading it every year. Okay. So, so what happens? What happens here is Oracle apply. Major patches basically. Major patches four times a year. Uh, apply or releases basically. Release major patches four times a year. So, what they call that is A, B, C, D. A means quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four basically. So now, what they will call as they will say, currently we release thirteen basically. They release thirteen, and they will say that year and quarter. That's why they they will call that release. So example, currently we are in a, a third quarter example. Then what does it mean? Is we release thirteen, eighteen, C. That's the meaning of it. So release 13, 18 C. That's the that's the instance you are in. Example. Okay. So release 13, 18 C means we are in 2018, and I got quarter three quarter three patches applied. It means that I got all these three patches available in my system. Okay. How do you know whether you are 18 C or 18 B or 18 D? Go here and go to your down here and go to about this application. And you will be seeing as 13, 18, 05. What does it mean? 
automatically oracle applies the patches on your instance basically oracle will give a provision of two things do you want to apply patches what are patches oracle releases do you want to apply them immediately in the next month or you want to apply it for every four months if you choose to apply immediately then typically what it happens whenever the release 18c automatically they will apply the patch on the next month itself if you say that don't don't apply every month give us enough time give us uh, uh, apply it end of every quarter then typically they will apply it end of every quarter maybe the instance what we are in we might be in the uh, quarterly patches that is why we are in 18b if you are not we will be in 18c basically okay that's what it is now as we getting multiple releases how do we know what what things are coming up with each release what are the new features being applied with release d or release c or release d for that you have to go to uh, uh, cloud.oracle.com and click on readiness it will say that what are the new features see we are in 18c basically under marketing what are the new features maybe our thing is human capital management click on human capital management out of that which one you want you want human resources talent management workforce rewards what you want example i want global human resource here you can see what are the new features in the global human resource if you click on that it will typically tell you in the global human resources these are all the new features came up basically sorry here example limit size for photo uploads photo upload is it was 2 mb before now they increased to 20 mb something like that so simplified navigation for document of records so all these these are all the new changes happened for 18c so basically that's what you have can see you can see the information too okay okay so with that i will conclude today's session and then tomorrow we will be starting how we typically okay today we have seen all the modules and tomorrow we are going to start talking about how we begin the implementation if you choose any module let us say if you choose global human resources module how we begin our implementation before implementation basically what is the first step in any implementation uh, we will begin from there and we will see the different phases in administration perspective and then we will start talking about functional setup manager which is actually a main tool to begin any implementation in a organized way okay we'll start from tomorrow uh, uh start the tomorrow and uh, i'll conclude session for today and uh, if you have any question shoot me else we can uh, meet tomorrow